All right, we had exactly 24 hours to test the brand new RX 9060 XT and here we are, literally the minute the embargo drops. Now, let's get one thing straight, there are two versions of this card, one with 16 gigs of VRAM and one with 8 gigs. And believe it or not, they both had the exact same name RX 9060 XT. But here's the catch, based on everything we have tested and all the subtle clues in AMD's documents, that 8 gig version, it's not the same GPU. Honestly, it should have just been called RX 9060, no XT, because this will confuse people a lot. In this video, we're showing you everything we found, how it performs in games, what FSR 4 brings to the table, and whether this card is actually worth buying or just another 16 gig marketing stunt. The RX 9060 XT is AMD's latest GPU, built on brand new RDNA 4 architecture and it promises a lot. The focus here is clear, maximum performance at 1080p and 1440p gaming, all for price under $350. On paper, it looks the promise of the new generation, in reality, that's where we come in. Like we said, this card comes in two versions, 8 gig and 16 gigabits of DDR6 VRAM. And yes, both are called RX 9060 XT, even though based on everything we have seen so far, the 8 gig version really should have been just called RX 9060. Why? Because these are actually two very different cards, but let's get back to the matters. The new RTNA 4 architecture brings upgraded ray tracing units, A acceleration, more cache, more frames and way better power efficiency per frame compared to previous generation. Boost clocks go over 3 GHz and the new AI cores now supports FP8 instructions and acceleration for generative AI models. What about ray tracing? This is the third generation. AMD doubled the number of ray intersection units and introduced a new way of handling geometry which means faster cheaper ray tracing with less impact on VRAM. And yes, if you're a gamer who likes to stream, the media engine got a serious upgrade. Whether you're using EV1, HGFC or H.264, real-time encoding quality is significantly better. In other words, the RX 9060 XT isn't just another GPU, it's MD's push to finally bring a mainstream card that's not just great for today, but also built to last for years ahead. Let's clear up one big question. Does the RX 9060 XT with 8 gigabits of VRAM perform the same as the one with 16 gigabits on paper? Everything looks the same, except for the memory, but something doesn't add up. If VRAM is the only difference, then why did the AMD in their official review guide sent to us under embargo show two complete separate charts with different results. In 1440p benchmarks, the 16GB of RX 9060 XT gets compared to the RTX 5060 Ti. Meanwhile, the 8GB version only gets tested at 1080p and only against the RX 7600, not even XT, even in ray tracing mode. For me, that clearly implies that 8GB version doesn't deliver anywhere near the same performance as this card. Otherwise, AMD would have promoted it side by side with 16 gig model, but they didn't, and that's not an accident. Unfortunately, we couldn't get our hand on RTX 5060 or its versions in time, but from everything we know, the 8 gig RX 9060 XT likely won't even match the base RTX 5060, especially in VRAM heavy games. Another thing, AMD generally handles VRAM allocation worse than Nvidia. So, what Nvidia can do with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, AMD might need 10 or even 12 to pull off. In our tests, we have already seen 1080p games using over 13 gigabytes of VRAM on AMD card, and no, that's not a rare case anymore. It's becoming the new normal. To make things worse, we have already seen 8 gigabit RX 9060 XT cards listed for insane prices on second-hand markets. And that's a problem, because if you buy one today, good luck reselling it tomorrow. That's why I personally think AMD made a mistake here. Both cards have the same name and they absolutely should have the same name. They could have made that distinction clearly and easily. So here's my advice, avoid 8 gigabit versions, seriously. 
work an extra shift, save up on difference and get the 16 gig model instead. You really thank yourself later because long term, that's the only version that actually makes sense. It will last longer and be easier to resell. All right, let's get to what you really care about, the real world performance of the RX 9060 XT with 16 gigabits of VRAM tested at 1440p resolution and of course full HD. VRAM benchmarks in 16 games from heavy AAA titles to fast paced esports and online hits. Here's what we got, Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster, 112 frames per second, smooth as butter. Returnal, a fantastic 94 FPS, F124 it flies over 200 FPS, even demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077, 103 and that's with no FSR 4, God of War Ragnarok, 105 FPS, Revenant 2, around 86, what about Black Meat Wood Kong, notoriously brutal delivered, 47 which is actually solid for this tier of GPU and game. And Stalker 2 still poorly optimized, managed 50 FPS, meaning this card is ready even for future titles, maybe at lower settings or lower resolution. The average RX 96 XT hits 99 FPS at 1440p across 16 games and that's with no upscaling, no FSR, no artificial boost, what you see is raw power. And here's the key point, not a single game required more than 16GB of VRAM, but many went beyond 8, which instantly knocks the 8GB version out of serious consideration. Now let's talk about 1080p tests. If you are gaming at this resolution, 9060 XT just shreds everything. Check it out. Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster, 157 FPS. Return a strong 125 FPS. F124, insane numbers, 249 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077, again with no FSR, a clean 146 FPS. God of War Ragnarok, rock solid. 130 FPS, Remnant 2, 139 FPS, even Black Meat Wukong puts out 70 FPS, that's amazing for such a heavy hitter. Overall average, RX 9070 XT delivers 138 FPS at 1080p across 16 games effortlessly. Now, the big question everyone's asking, where exactly does the RX 9060 XT fit in? We didn't have every rel on GPU on hand, but based on tests we run and what we know about the RX 7700 XT, the RTX 5060 Ti and the RTX 5060, the picture is pretty clear. The RX 9060 XT with 16GB of RAM sits roughly in the same tier as RTX 5060 Ti with 16GB and the RX 7700 XT in both 1080p and 1440p resolution. Compared to the base RTX 5060, it should be noticeable faster. And at 1440p the gap grows even wider, because the 8 gigabit RTX 5060 Ti can lose up to 20% performance due to lack of VRAM. The base RTX 5060 might fall another 10% below that. Now, I really wish we had more time and more cards, but even with these comparisons, the RX 9060 XT clearly lands as a new mainstream contender. As for the price, we only have the MSRP values on time when we publish this video. $350 for the stronger model and $300 for the weaker one with 8 gigabits of VRAM. But 
Here's the crazy part, the 8 gigabits version is already showing up online for 500 bucks. And that's just insane. So I will say it again, avoid the 8 gig version, focus on 16 gig model only. If the price goes up by 30% and hits 400 bucks, it still makes sense, as long as MD doesn't mess up availability. Let's talk ray tracing really quick. At 1440p resolution, the RX 9060XT with 16 gigabits of VRAM averaged 41 frames per second in games like Cyberpunk 2077, Star Wars Outlaws, Dragon Age Rail Guard, Black Myth Wukong, and Hogwarts Legacy. Drop it down to 1080p and the numbers jump, you're looking at an average of 59 FPS. FPS. But Here's the thing, most of these games use basic ray tracing effects. Once you turn on pet tracing or full ray tracing, AMD cards start falling behind fast. And that's expected. Nvidia is already on their fourth generation of RT hardware, while AMD is just now taking ray tracing seriously. So, if ray tracing is priority for you, RX 9060XT isn't the champ, it gets the job done, but it doesn't dominate. Now, about FSR4, this is where things get very interesting. FSR4 is no longer just software, it's hardware accelerated and it only works on RX 9000 series cards. It uses AI acceleration and delivers a noticeable jump in image quality. However, it only works in supported games, right now there are about 50 titles, more or less. That list is growing, but developers still lean toward NVIDIA's ecosystem. With the LSS4, you get more games, better integration, and thanks to the Transformer kit, Gen K, the LSS4 also wins in fine details and image stability. FSR4 is visually similar to the LSS3 with its CNN model, so if you like the LSS3, you'll probably enjoy FSR4 as well. And here's something important, both systems in quality mode render the game at 67% of native resolution, and the upscaling is seriously impressive on both sides. You also get about 30% performance uplift. My advice, do not go below quality mode. Anything lower starts to look soft and the performance gain is barely worth it. But bottom line, the LSS4 still holds the edge, especially in complex scenes. The RX 9060 XT with 16 gigabits of VRAM, honestly, is a really solid GPU. It delivers performance close to the RX 7700 XT, but adds extra value. You have FSR4, battery tracing, and the brand new ecosystem built for the future. And yes, some people manage to port FSR4 to older cards like the RX 7000 series using Linux, but without FP8 support, it's just not the same experience. The MSRP, $350, and the card performs similarly to RTX, 5060Ti with 16 gigabits, which officially costs 413 bucks. What about the weaker 8 gig version of Ti model? That goes about uh, for 380 bucks, and it's not even in the same league as the 9060XT with 16 gigabits. If this card launches around 380 dollars to 400, it's a great deal. Anything lower than that, total win. And if you see it at MSRP, just buy it. Do not overthink. You won't get a better GPU for the price, not now and probably not anytime soon. Because here's the reality, RTX 5060 Ti with 16 gig of VRAM is selling for 430 bucks in local stores. But we have to admit Nvidia has the better ecosystem and that alone is worth about 10% more realistically. Ray tracing is stronger on Nvidia cards and more importantly, it's becoming the default lighting method in new games. Star Wars Outlaws, Indiana Jones and the new Doom all use ray traced shadows as default. That's what we call the future. So here's the deal, if the RX 9060XT is at least 10% cheaper than the RTX 5060Ti, it's a better buy. If the price difference is smaller, Nvidia's better RT and DLSS combo starts making sense. Am I biased? No, just honest. The value of this card depends entirely on its price. If the RX 9060XT ends up costing 500 like the 8GB version already listed online, forget it. But if the 16 gig model lands around 380 to 400, that's totally win. And by the way, the Asus Prime model is one of the cheaper variants, but it performs like a true mid-range card. It's quiet even at 60% fan speed, and in some games VRAM and hotspot temps hover around 80 degrees Celsius. That's high, but not very dangerous.
Now look, can we launch their cards first and their prices look stepper. But the RX 96 TXT could be the balancing force we need in the GPO market, hopefully to benefit us, the buyers, not the retailers. So let me be crystal clear, we don't know the final pricing and it will change. That's why the most important thing is understanding where this card fits. And what I can say with confidence, avoid the 8 gig version. Performance is clearly lower and resale value terrible. Buy the 16 gig model. If the price is fair, you won't regret it. Now, let me say something that really bothers me. 8 gigabit cards still have a place, but not at 300 bucks. Almost 10 years ago, you could buy an RX 480 with 8 gig for 200. And back then, that made absolute sense. The philosophy was simple, give users more than they expected. Today, prices are set based on Nvidia's lineup. Look at what the competition offers, undercut $20 to $50 and boom, that's your MSRP. Then Frank Heather goes on Twitter saying both the 8 gig and 16 gig versions are no compromise, really. Tell me what you think, Nvidia wrecked the entire RTX 1500 lineup, but AMD, AMD had a chance to be better and to be fair, they made great GPU, so all three we have tested so far are solid, but the RX 96 the XT 8 GB, it should have just been called RX 9060. No XT, this is an anti-consumer move and every time someone says AMD cares about the users, they do not. They care about themselves and that's fine. Just do not pretend to be different from Nvidia because you're not. That's why I'm here giving you facts, numbers and tests and you decide where to put your money. RX 96 TXT with 16 gigabits VRAM is solid step forward. We won't see future proof cards for 200 bucks anymore because nothing is cheaper anymore. In the last five to six years, everything has doubled. Food, rent, housing, services, life itself costs over 100% more. And while hardware has resisted inflation longer than most, it's catching up now. So, one last time, RX 96 TXT with 16 GB of RAM is an excellent GPU. It brings RX 7700 XT level performance, supports FSR 4, has solid ray tracing and the future-ready ecosystem. If it hits the right price and AMD keeps shelves stocked, this is the card to buy. The 8 gig versions avoid it. We already know the performance gap is real and the long-term value highly questionable. Nvidia still has the stronger ecosystem, but with this card, AMD finally brings balance to the mid-range segment. At the end of the day, it all comes down to price. If the RX 9060 XT stays below the danger zone, this is the GPU to buy this summer. Because, let's be honest, it all depends on price, but considering how weak the green team li lineup is, beating them shouldn't be that hard. See you in the next one. See you soon.